Hello, it's all about the money today on the Outlander PHEV. If you're considering buying it used, I'm going to break down the costs that I've incurred over five months of ownership. We will then look at the annualized and monthly version of these costs. So first things first, car depreciation is normally the big item. The car was purchased for about 17,300 pounds in the UK, 42,000 miles, and I was back in June, July of 2021. By December, the price sold part exchange was almost exactly 19,000 pounds. So depreciation of minus 1,676 pounds. It's a good start, but of course we'll talk about how annualized we wouldn't expect this kind of very special situation due to the shortage of semiconductors. That means that cars are appreciating rather than depreciating over a short period of time. The second item is the insurance. It's a relatively large car, reasonably recent, 2018, and therefore for five months you end up with 277 pounds. Road tax, 73 pounds, that's 145 pounds per year. So you don't have this very low road tax as you might have on an electric or in fact on some of the older cars that would be either PHEV or very low consumption diesels. In this period of time, I've not had to pay for an MOT, but that would be 40, 50 pounds in a given year. Now servicing, I had to do one service, which was the fourth service, fourth year, it comes every year, and it was 357 done by a official Mitsubishi dealer. I then take into account the wall box charger that I've had fitted for this car. It's a 595 pound install, including the box itself. And I've decided to amortize it over a period of five years. Now in fairness, you could argue it even appreciates the house and all of that. But let's say for sake of argumentation that we should not forget the cost of the box. In that case, it's a Sankey V. You can check out the video about this separately. You've got a bunch of miscellaneous, a 16 amp cable I purchased, a couple of apps, the watchdog, highly recommended, and that ends up being about 80 pounds. Now we put fuel in that car, so petrol and electricity. For the 5,000 miles, I spent 364 pounds on petrol and just 92 pounds on electricity. Now that's interesting because I would argue about half of the miles were done on electricity and half of the miles on petrol. So you can see how petrol uh, comes out very expensive for what it really does, let alone its impact on the environment. Overall, on these five months ownership, I was paid 371 pounds to drive 5,000 miles. Like I said at the start, it's a very unusual situation and it all has to do with the crazy price inflation on second-hand cars. Now, we are gonna talk about the annualized version and the monthly version of those costs. But before we do that, let me know in the comment section whether you'd like me to compare these to an EV and a diesel, because I've had both in the last year. Now let's take a look at how much that would be on an annual basis. I've decided that my average would be somewhere around 6,000 miles for a given year. So the main difference now on an annual basis is to estimate the car depreciation. It's pretty hard to do that and anyone's guess at the minute. What I've looked at here is to take about 60% of the value three years down the line and amortized over three years. Uh, so that takes us to uh, about 2,200 pounds for an annual spend on the car depreciation. Now all the rest is prorated and you can see that there's still a very 
fair amount of money spent on petrol at 433. Overall, we are about 4,000 pounds of spend for a given year. If you look at the monthly spend, which is again monthly over three year ownership now, 500 miles per month, you can see that car depreciation would be about half of the overall spend of 341. Petrol, 36 pounds, electricity, nine pounds. And in the main, I think that most of this would be very similar to what you'd get on a car of that age um, if it was a diesel or petrol car. Paying the same for a more eco-friendly vehicle is probably not a bad thing at all. I've estimated I've produced about 42% lower emissions than with the diesel I had before. And overall, the energy I consume per 100 kilometers is about 20% lower. So I think these are pretty decent results, although let's keep in mind I've recharged the vehicle at every opportunity and that is quite a task. So I can see how the PHEV detractors will say, oh yeah, it's the worst of both worlds. The reality is it's a decent option. It is probably a transition vehicle and it certainly has been for us, hence why we've only kept it for five months before getting on to the full battery electric vehicle. That's it for today. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comment section. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.